Then we're just gonna tap, 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 tap. Oh, 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 got a little crazy there. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is that magical time of year when the holiday Starbucks menu comes out. So for today's video, I'm going to try to recreate all of the yummies on the Starbucks menu. Let's get started. The first treat that I'm gonna to attempt to recreate is the classic, the iconic Starbucks snowman cookie. They're so cute. Now, according to Starbucks menu, this is a brown sugar shortbread cookie with white chocolatey icing. So the first thing that I'm gonna be making is a brown sugar shortbread dough. So in front of me, I have the ingredients and I'll be sure to post all of the ingredients and their measurements in the description down below. So if you wanna make these at home and follow along, you can. So we're gonna start with our dry ingredients over here in a little bowl. I've got flour and just a little bit of salt. We're just gonna whisk this together till well combined. I'm just gonna set this off to the side and I'm gonna work on my butter. So over here in a large bowl, we're gonna add two sticks of butter. This is at room temperature, it's nice and soft. I'm using an electric hand mixer. We're just gonna to mix up our butter. So fluffy. Now we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of vanilla extract. Just mix until combined. This will take about one or two minutes. You're gonna add all of your dry ingredients. Now this time we're just gonna mix together until the dough starts to form. That's what it should look like after mixing. It's almost like chunky sand. With clean washed hands, you're gonna get your hands in there and just Get that dough to form together. Just keep working it with your hands until you get a solid dough. Okay, I just took the dough and I just shaped it to a little disc and now we're gonna roll it out. So I'm gonna take this mat, flip it on top so it won't stick and we're gonna roll it out to be about a third of an inch thick. Once we get this dough rolled out, I'm gonna pop it into the fridge to chill so that it will hold its shape and we're gonna cut out some cute little snowmen. This is the closest cookie cutter I could find online to the Starbucks snowman. It's a hair taller and a little bit leaner, but pretty close. All right, so now we're just gonna place it down and cut out as many cookies as possible into the dough and then I'm gonna place them onto a baking sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper. Look at all these little cookies we've got on the sheet. Now I'm gonna heat the oven to 325 degrees and bake for about 10 to 12 minutes. <laughs> Once the cookies have baked, give them plenty of time to cool and now it's time for my favorite part. It is time to decorate. We're gonna be taking some white chocolate chips, a little bit of coconut oil. So I'm just gonna mix these together and then pop this in the microwave for 30 second increments. Heat it up, mix, mix, heat it up, mix, mix. Get it nice and melted and it won't burn. And then I'm gonna pour it into a little piping bag and we're gonna pipe some melted chocolate on top of our cookies. All right, we've got our white melted chocolate in a little piping bag. I'm not using a tip, I just cut off the end. And now we're gonna create an outline all the way around the cookie, like this one right here. This is gonna help when we're flooding the cookie to keep all of the icing chocolate inside. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna do 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 pipe all the way around. I'm leaving a little bit of space. Now we're going to flood it. So just cut a larger hole at the tip of the bag. This little line is not very tall, so you don't want to really put too much chocolate on the top. You want it to be a thin layer on the top. So I like to do a little zigzag, and then using a toothpick, fill it in. And when it sets, it's gonna be nice and smooth. You can give a little tap to smooth it out, or a little shake. Look at that perfectly smooth. All the air bubbles get out of there. Just tap, 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 tap. And you wanna do this part when it's still wet. So move quick. Once it's all flat and it's still wet, it hasn't set, you're gonna wanna add your icing sugar. So just take a little pinch and you put it right here at the bottom. Then you're gonna let that set. It takes about 10 minutes. The thing I love about chocolate is it sets very quickly. And if you want it to set even quicker than that, you can pop these in the refrigerator and they will harden, set up faster. Now we're gonna decorate the details with some royal icings. I have them in piping bags with small metal tips for a little bit more control. And the goal is to get them to look like this. This is the goal. So let's pipe some little earmuffs and then I can fill it in as we go. And then do some little eyeballs. And he's got his little smirk, little orange for a carrot nose. Oh my gosh, look how cute. All right, now we need a scarf. A nice rounded edge here and two drops. And then I'm gonna fill them in to be thicker. Last but not least, we need some buttons. We need three of them. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> I'm obsessed. 
Now you're gonna do this to the rest of your cookies. And ta-da, there you have it, Starbucks snowman cookies. Okay, I gotta say, ours is pretty stinking cute. This is the Starbucks one. He's a little bit more chibi. And then this one, he's ours. First, let's taste the Starbucks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. Now, let's taste our recipe. Wow, that is super close. The only difference, there's baked a little bit longer. It's a little bit more golden brown, crunchy on the bottom. And ours is just that light golden brown. I'm tasting a texture difference. This one just tastes a lot fresher. That's probably because I just made them. Oh, delicious. Nothing beats a homemade cookie, but this is close. We did it. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next treat. Next Starbucks treat that we're gonna make is the beloved Cranberry Bliss Bar. <gasps> Look at all this yumminess, you guys. Let's get started. Oh, I just want to eat it right now. To make these, the first thing that we're going to do is sift our dry ingredients in a large bowl right here. I've got a large sieve. 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 Oh my gosh, I'm having a brain fart. So we're going to sift our flour, baking powder, a little ginger, and salt. Then we're just gonna tap, 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 tap. Oh, 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 got a little crazy there. Oh my gosh, look at this. It looks like it's snowing. <laughs> That's looking good. Now, set it off to the side. We're gonna be working on our wet ingredients over here. In a large mixing bowl, we have our melted butter, which just smells delicious. And we're gonna mix in our brown sugar. Now here, we're not gonna cream together our butter and sugar. We're just gonna mix until it's incorporated. Once mixed, you're gonna add two eggs, a little bit of fresh orange zest. Oh, yum, 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 yum. And a little bit of vanilla extract. I feel like a witch. Hee hee, this is my potion. <laughs> now we're gonna mix together one more time till well incorporated. We've got our wet ingredients and our dry. Now we put them together. Pour all of the dry ingredients into the wet and mix together. Now here you don't want to over mix. As soon as you can't see any more flour, stop. Oh yeah, look at that. Now this is the fun part. We're going to fold in two more ingredients, some white chocolate chips and some craisins, which are dried cranberries. Oh, I love these. They're so tart. They just give it that pop of oh, 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 oh. They're great. Then using a spatula, fold them together. Yes! The batter is looking good, smelling good, and now we're gonna pour it all into a big baking sheet. Now I've lined it with a piece of parchment paper just to make it a little bit easier, and this is, oh, it's a thick batter. This weighs a lot. So I'm gonna use my little muscles, I'm gonna scoop it onto the sheet. This batter is sticky, so you wanna use an offset spatula and just spread as evenly and flat as you can. It can touch the sides of the pan, that's fine. Once you've got it spread in the baking pan, you're gonna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake these for about 18 to 22 minutes. Just keep your eye on them. You want the top to get a little golden brown and don't worry if there's any gaps like this because this batter, it spreads and it rises and it'll fill in. It's a little hard to spread because of all the little yummy chunks, all the little chocolate chips or white chocolate chips, yeah. <laughs> You get it. While our bars are cooling, we're gonna make our cream cheese icing. Yum, 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 yum. So in a large bowl here, I have two sticks of cream cheese, some powdered sugar, and a little bit more of that fresh orange zest. Mix them together on a slow speed. Once you have that frosting done, we're gonna make one more thing to put on the top of these bliss bars. Just a little bit of powdered sugar mixed with a little bit of water for a nice little glaze drizzle. Ooh, this bar has got layers. A lot going on on this little bar. Reminds me of me. Little but complex. We're gonna start decorating. We're gonna make this look exactly like the one from Starbucks or as close to as we can. So we want out of this rectangle it to be 10 by 15 using a large sharp cutting knife. We're gonna cut off the edges. <gasps> We're gonna put all of this delicious cream cheese icing on the top. Then using a spatula, you're gonna spread it out as evenly as possible. It's a nice thick layer. Cream cheese icing is spread on top. Now it's time for a cranberry. <laughs> Sprinkle your craisins <laughs> all over the top. The more the merrier. I don't know about you, but I love 
cranberries. I love cranberry sauce. I love making it every year. So good. The final decoration, that little bit of icing that we made with powdered sugar and a little bit of water. And we're just gonna lightly drizzle all over. Oh my gosh, this is looking good. We're almost there. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge to chill for about 30 minutes before we cut so that this icing has a little bit of time to set. We're gonna cut them into four rows, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So we're gonna have 16 bars and then we're gonna cut diagonally. So we'll have little triangles. All right, but for now, let's go chill these. Ta-da, there you have it, homemade Starbucks Cranberry Bliss Bars. They look amazing. Okay, I'm gonna grab the one from Starbucks and then one of ours. Oh. <laughs> let's give a little taste test. First, Starbucks. It's so good. Mmm. Now let's taste ours. Mmm. These are so close. I think that their thing has just a hair more butter, and I think they put some type of preservative or something in this icing because our icing is freshly made, so it just like melts in your mouth a little bit easier, but theirs is kind of a little bit more commercial. But still, delicious. I think we nailed it. This was great. The next recipe that we're gonna be making is the Starbucks gingerbread loaf. First up to making our gingerbread loaf is whisking together our dry ingredients into this medium-sized bowl, starting with flour, little baking soda, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, clove, mm. and some salt. Whisk together till well combined and set off to the side. Then, in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna cream together our butter and sugar. Remember, you want your butter to be room temperature, nice and soft, and our sugar is gonna be brown sugar. We're gonna cream these together for a couple of minutes until it's light and fluffy. Oh, that's nice. Looking good. Now we're gonna add a bunch of molasses. Oh, that spatula comes in handy right now. A little bit of vanilla. Now, mix until combined. Ooh, beautiful. Color. Last wet ingredient to add, two eggs, the yolk and the egg white. And just so you know, when we're mixing these up, it's gonna split a little bit, but that's okay because when we add our dry ingredients, it'll come back together. I call it cottage cheesy. Kinda looks a little funny, that's okay. Just mix together till well combined. Look at that, looks a little, ooh, weird. All of our mixtures are ready and now we're gonna alternate adding our dry mixture with buttermilk to our wet mixture. Starting and ending with dry. So we're gonna add a little dry, mix it up, add half the buttermilk, mix it up, add a little more dry, mix it up, add the rest of the buttermilk, mix it up, and the last of the dry, and then mix it up. Our batter is now ready. It's looking good, smelling good. We're gonna pour it into the pan. Now, normally a standard little bread pan is a nine by five, and this batter is perfect for a normal standard bread pan, but because I want mine to look exactly like the one from Starbucks, this is a 7.5 by 3.5. This is not standard. This is commercial. You wanna fill it about half an inch below the top. That's our goal, so it's almost full. So I'm gonna keep scooping that in there until we get about that height. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there, give it a little shake, see where we're at, and pro tip, this little bread pan is already lined with a piece of parchment paper. I leave a little excess at the top so you can easily pop out your bread. So lined and greased before you put your batter in. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh one more scoop. I think we could fit one more. One, oh, one more. Oh, oh, okay, wait, wait, oh, I'm getting excited. Go stop me. <gasps> Our gingerbread loaf is ready to bake. You're gonna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for about 45 to 50 minutes. <laughs> Look at that loaf. We gave it plenty of time to cool. And now we're gonna make a little cream cheese icing to spread over the top. I've got some powdered sugar, a little bit of cream cheese, and a little bit of vanilla extract. Mix together, and once it's nice and smooth, we're gonna spread it just on the top just like Starbucks. Here we go, here we go. I'm excited, okay, oh, gotta slow it down, slow it down. Excited, but slow. Now we're gonna scoop it on top of this cute little loaf, spread as flat as we can, and cut some slices. Did you, from scratch, Starbucks gingerbread loaf. They look amazing. Now this is the one from Starbucks, and this is ours. Can you even tell the difference? My icing is slightly thicker, but I love it. Oh my gosh, this is the best day ever. <laughs> mm, mm. Now, let's try ours. Wow, oh my goodness. 
I'm in outer space, you guys. This is delicious. Honestly, I kind of like the fresh icing better. This one is nice because it's really hardened and it's really set, so it's not as messy. But a fresh icing? This one's fresh to death. This is a great recipe. This video would not be complete without a cake pop, so the next treat that we're gonna attempt to make are the peppermint brownie cake pops. First step to making these peppermint brownie cake pops is we've got to make some brownies. This recipe is from my cookbook, Nerdy Nummies. I cut the recipe in half because that's all we need today. So in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add our sugar, flour, cocoa powder, mmm, baking soda, and salt. Whisk together till well combined. You just want everything to become the same color. Now we can just add everything in here. A little bit of veggie oil, milk, vanilla extract, and one egg. Mix together until well combined. As soon as you don't see any more dry ingredients, stop mixing. You don't want to over mix. You can just use your spatula. Because I'm a baking machine today, I'm going to be using my electric mixer. Give me a little bit more help. Brownie batter is ready, and now we're going to pour it into a pan which has been greased and lined. Now heat your oven to 375 and bake for about 25 to 30 minutes and your whole house goes smell like brownies it's amazing after your brownie has baked give it some time to cool i made a ganache now to make it little holiday like i added a few drops of peppermint oil and now we have a chocolate peppermint ganache now in this big mixing bowl, to make our brownie cake pop, we are gonna crumble our brownie just like you would a cake. Be sure that your brownie is completely cool. Otherwise, it's gonna melt this ganache. So you're just gonna break your brownie apart. Oh, like that, like that, like that. And just break, 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 break. Oh yeah, perfect. Then we're gonna scoop in the ganache. I love using ganache to bind cake pops. I don't use anything else anymore, only ganache. I'm gonna mix these two together until it creates like a dough. Our brownie and our ganache are mixed together but this is too soft so I've got to pop it in the fridge to chill to firm up and once it's chilled we can roll into little cake balls this is the fun part so I'm using a little ice cream scooper but if you don't have one of these you want about two tablespoons and we're gonna roll little balls like this just use your hands Bloop, place them on the tray. Now over here, I found some red and white paper straws. Cut them in half. I thought these were way cuter. This is my little twist on it. So you're gonna take your little straw, dip it into some melted white chocolate, place into the ball, then you're gonna let them sit. And over here, I have these ones. These are already ready. Let's take one. So after they've set, it just takes like about five, 10 minutes. You're gonna take your brownie cake pop and cover the whole thing with melted white chocolate. All right, and then here's what we wanna do. Just on the side of the cup, just tap, 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 nice and gentle. Just little baby taps. Don't go too hard, because your pop will fly right off. It's the whole thing, don't do it. When the drip slows down, you just wipe it on the side of the cup. Oh, <gasps> look how pretty. Then we're gonna sprinkle crushed up candy cane and icing sugar. Oh, look how pretty that looks. It's cuter than Starbucks. I think they should do these straws. They're so much cuter. Oh, look at that. Boom. Then you just keep doing that to the rest of your brownie cake pops. And there you have it. Peppermint brownie cake pops. They're so adorable. Now let's bring in the Starbucks one and compare. See what I'm saying about the lollipop stick? And the pattern only comes up to here. Ours way more colorful. I think it's way prettier. Look, I'll put it against my shirt. The icing sugar, the crushed candy cane, they're the same size. Now let's do a taste test. Starbucks first. Mmm. Oh my gosh, the chocolate, the mint, the crunch. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay, now it's time for ours. Oh my gosh, it's so fudgy, so chocolatey. A little less minty than the Starbucks one, but still chocolate mint. Ooh, this is a close call. This one's a little bit more minty. This one's still chocolate minty. Fresh. This little stick is cuter, but because it is a straw and it's hollow, you gotta be a little careful. You gotta hold it a little higher up. I took a bite earlier and I was holding it like this, like down here, and I bit into it and it bent. <laughs> So I will say, these are cuter. These lollies do have a little bit more structure. This one is neck and neck. I can't pick a favorite. I like them both for different reasons. The last treat that we're gonna try to make is the sugar plum cheese 
Danish. I love Starbucks Danishes. They are so good, I could eat a million of them. And the sugar plum one that comes out for the holidays, that's what color shirt I'm wearing. I call this sugar plum. Let's go, let's do it. First step to making the sugar plum cheese danish is making the filling. This is jam, and we're gonna make a spice jam. So to the sugar plum jam, we're gonna add cinnamon, cloves, and crushed cardamom. Just gonna mix together, incorporate those. Oh yeah. Look at that beautiful color. Oh yeah. Then over here, We've got some cream cheese, a little bit of powdered sugar. We're just gonna mix all these together. A little vanilla extract, a little bit of salt. Again, with a small spatula, just mix these up. It really helps if your cream cheese is at room temperature. You don't want it to be too cold from the fridge. It's harder to mix that way. The fillings are looking good. I'm gonna scoop these into piping bags and then I'm gonna go get our puff pastry and roll it out. I have been baking all day, so I'm not gonna be making puff pastry from scratch. I went to the store and I got puff pastry. So the squares that they give you come in nine by nine, but we want 12 by 12. We also want it to be a little thinner because these things really fluff up. They really rise. So I have a little ruler here and we just wanna go three more inches each way. So I've got my weighted rolling pin. I sprinkled a little flour on the surface and we're just gonna stretch it out just a little bit more. Doesn't need to be perfect, but we want it thinner. Oh, okay, we, yeah, we did it. Now we're gonna cut four squares and each of them are gonna be about four and a half inches. After you've got your squares cut out, you're gonna take a little round four inch pan and we're just gonna place one of them at the bottom. The corners are gonna go up the sides and we're gonna press the edges down. Then take a fork and we're gonna dock the bottom. Docking is just poking. You're just gonna poke holes in the bottom. That's gonna allow the heat to escape. Take your cream cheese filling, and I've gotten a piping bag. I cut the top. We're gonna leave half an inch all the way around on the outside, but we're gonna pipe a circle in the middle. This is very thin, you don't want a lot. And once you got that thin layer, now you're gonna pipe on top of it, kinda like a little fence, all the way around. Oh, and why do we pipe the outline? Because what's going in the middle? We are gonna flood it with our plum spiced jam. I'm just gonna keep doing this till I run out of puff pastry, or filling, or both. I don't know, <laughs> I'm making a bunch. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm just a baking queen right now. I'm just a, I'm a machine, I'm a queen. A machine queen. Heat your oven to 400 degrees and bake for about 20 to 22 minutes. Keep your eye on them. We'll turn a nice golden brown around the edges. And da -dee, there you have it. Sugar plum cheese danishes. They're so cute. I love how they turned out. In hindsight, I think I should have pushed the corners down. <laughs> Because look, definitely they push these little corners down. They kind of look like little crowns. <laughs> All right. Well, we've done the looks comparison. But now let's do the taste. Oh my gosh. It's like a buttery croissant and in the middle the cheesy and the oh, oh my gosh. These are delish. All right, now let's try mine. <laughs> Confidence in my voice. Mmm. It's flakier, it's crispier. Whoa. They're different, but it's not a bad thing. I actually like our cream cheese and our jam better. It has better flavors. And the crispiness on the softness, it's not soggy at all. Starbucks dough is a little bit softer. And I'm honestly not sure which one I like more. I keep gravitating towards this one. The filling, it's just fresh. It's just fresh to death. I mean, that filling is just so good. Looks-wise, th these are way cuter, but taste-wise, I actually like these more. All right, that does it for recreating the Starbucks holiday menu. I have to say, I think today was a pretty big success. Some of these neck and neck, you guys. So if you don't have a Starbucks near you and you want to try one of these out, Give it a shot. It's hard for me to pick a favorite. This is so hard, but you know what? Oh, these Cranberry Bliss Bars, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if there's any other menus I should try to recreate. I'll be posting the pictures and the recipes in the description down below and on my website. So if you wanna recreate any of these at home, you can. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Hope you guys enjoy the recipes and see you soon. Bye-bye. And if you'd like to watch any other videos, you can click up here or up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs>